bitch with no dang on him. Up the 
friends, but I ain't have peace. Moving out of time, and I didn't know me. I was in a place, I was fighting demons. Got me right, told me leave them. I can't go back to that season. I can't go back to that season. Yeah. Talking to God while 
world is right in the down. It was worse cause they wanted him dead. Yeah. What pushes a man to go talk about a life that he's never seen and never led? Yeah. What pushes a man to go speak with his chest? No one ups in the crime on him dead. Yeah. Just please pick up that bucket. It's never regular, I'm on the schedule, yeah I know that it is a level up I'm always messing up, so are the people in it I got no time for no games, yeah All they be selling is pain, yeah The hand that you give, watch them take it You made it, you thought you were safer All the money you making them stack But you, you ain't getting that bad So you sit, let the demons attack While I sit with my peace, let them fight on my behalf If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one If it's for me, then who be against me? Hey man, well I love you. I'm so thankful to be with you. And y'all know the drill. If you can hear me well, put a thumbs up in the chat. That way we don't get too far along without good audio. So if the audio is good and you can hear us well, put a thumbs up in the chat. I love you, mom. And then tonight I'm going to give you a full warning. We're not going to do too much flipping because one, I'm tired. <laughs> and then two, we got some travel. Janika always looking like, you're not going to short us our time. But you have me when the camera's cut off. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Y'all got an intercessor in the room. So we may flip it. We'll see. But <clears throat> thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. <clears throat> thumbs up. Amen. Amen. So, like I said, we, we won't be as long tonight because I do have some travels coming up. And we don't have as much time as we normally do. But I thank God with his grace that he's been with us and he's enabled us and empowered us so that we can continue. And in light of these different things that we've been talking about, I was going to continue God of Our Fathers because that's like, I could teach that for a long time. So there's a part two and part three to that, but we'll come back to that. But I wanted, I felt like the Lord wanted us to talk about mastering the flesh. And that's kind of where we're going to go tonight. And we'll go through some couple of scriptures. So I have John with me, John to help me read. And then with God's grace, we'll find ourselves in the path with God. Amen. Excellent. So when we talk about mastering the flesh, one of the things that we need to understand is that I've taught you before that you have spirit, you have soul, and you have body. Now, the way most men function and operate is they operate body, soul, spirit. But the way God desired us to function is that we would first function through our spirit, that would affect our souls, and then that in turn would direct our bodies. So you've heard me say that a number of different ways, a number of different times, but if you're new, I'll say it for you. God desires us to function spirit, soul, body. Most of us spend time functioning body, soul, spirit. Now, the reason this is important when we talk about mastering the flesh, because the physical flesh has been shaped in iniquity. The physical form, that which we can touch, has literally been shaped in iniquity. So if you allow yourself to be led body, soul, spirit, you will never be able to truly walk in the spirit. So, of course, we're going to talk about walking in the spirit. But in order to walk in the spirit, it has to be the dominant function in which you utilize. And these things take intention. These things take purposeful meaning. They aren't something that you don't just walk in the spirit happenstance. No man wakes up and is like, oh, today I, I accidentally walked in the spirit. <laughs> right? It's something that takes intention and it's something that takes purpose. And that's kind of the direction that we're going to go with God's grace. We'll end up talking about walking in the spirit not fulfilling the lust of the flesh because you have the spirit which is from God that now dwells in you but this physical body has still been shaped in iniquity this physical body still understands sin this physical body still remembers sin this physical body let alone if we take aside desiring sin remembering sin this physical body still has a natural nature and desire within it that's why the flesh has to be crucified Right? That's why Paul said, I mortify the deeds of the flesh. The deeds of the flesh aren't the flesh. 
the deeds are the flesh is the things that the flesh does. And he says, in order to deal with that, I have to mortify those things. Mortify meaning to crucify, mortify meaning to kill, mortify meaning to murder. There is no other way around it, right? That's a, vi that's a violent thing when we talk about that. So dealing with the flesh, hey, bless you, Ty. I love you, man of God. Look forward to talking to you tomorrow. And dealing with the flesh, we talk about mastering the flesh. Sin has a desire to master you. However, and you and you remember when we talked about the trap of sexual sin, I tapped on it briefly, and I'm, that's another teaching that I do where I teach about the lust of the spirit because the spirit has a desire also. However, the flesh has a desire, and the only way for that desire to be fulfilled is for sin to enter you. When sin enters you, it then moves you about in which way that it wants you to go. So most times people think that sin is and there's different dynamics to sin but in this specific case that we're talking about most people think sin is that oh i did this i did this i did this i did this no sin entering you is what causes you to do those different things you understand so you have someone who deals with x y and z and i don't i won't call them out because we're just talking about the concept that sin is resident within the flesh but that sin is what causes you to fulfill or do certain deeds. Okay? Now, all sin is not the same. So even though I said I'm not going to say X, I'm not going to say Y, and I'm not going to say Z. Z is much worse than A. Right? So, and I don't have to go but tell you which parts of the alphabets I'm talking about. A, B, C, D, L, G, B, Q, T, Z, V. Right? There are certain things <laughs> that would seem worse mm -hmm. than other things. Yet it's all sin. But there were certain things, even in the word of God, it says that he who does this sins against his own self. Yes. Then there were certain things that were sins under God. So there's not, it's not all thrown in the same pot, although it is all thrown in the same pot in the sense of an offense before God, an offense before his throne, an offense before his ways. It's not all the same. Okay. But the first thing we understand is that sin desire is to rule over you. And in order for sin to rule, he has to enter inside so he can become the captain of the ship. And when you live your life in this very carnal, very Eastern, very lukewarm Christian kind of way, unspiritual kind of way, you live your life first primarily in your body, secondarily in your soul. Third, your spirit is the least influential thing that you have in you. However, your spirit should be leading you and directing you. Your spirit should be guiding you. And your soul should be captain to that. And your body should just turn about in which way it should go. In a perfect world, these human bodies are nothing more than shells. <clears throat> when I say to a shell, what do I mean? This physical body, this thing here, is nothing more than a shell. Without the soul, it has no direction. Without the soul, it has no way to give it direction, to give it shape, to give it form, or to turn it about in any kind of direction. With the soul, it now has the ability to be impressed upon and say, hey, I want Chick-fil-A today. Or, hey, I want this, or I'm going to do this, or I desire this, or I don't like this, all those different things. But without the soul, the body is nothing more than a shell. That's why when the soul exits a man, <clears throat> excuse me, or when his spirit leaves, the body goes into the ground. The reason being the life source that allows a man to be powered, right? So everyone, we all call it different ways. Some may call it the life source, the spirit, the eternal spark. Everybody got a different way. But what I'm talking about, the source which gives a man life is truly his spirit. So although we have lungs inside of us, our lungs help us to breathe. Although we have different organs that have different functions that we cannot live without. They work, however, without the spirit, none of those things even matter. So when a person's on, <clears throat> what's wrong? You good? Okay. So even when a person's on, life support or something right and they're like boom clear right boom clear even if they can bring life back to that person if the spirit is gone it doesn't matter you understand what i'm saying so the spirit is truly what houses and what gives us the ability for life not our lungs not our chest not our heart those things are a byproduct of his spirit being inside of us his spirit inside of us is what gives us the ability to live
Now, when I talk about his spirit being inside of us, Ecclesiastes helps us understand that when a man dies, the spirit returns back to God. So every man, whether in Christ or out of Christ, has a portion of God inside of him. That's how eternity is written on the hearts of every man. So when the word of God says that he has written eternity into the heart of every man, the reason eternity is written is because a peace from the eternal one is existent in every person that has been created. Every person that has been created has a piece of the eternal one existing on the inside of them. Now for us who have then turned to God, he is now our Lord and he is our master. Our spirits are supplanted and we receive Holy Spirit. We become one spirit with the Lord. You understand? We literally become one spirit with him. And in that one spirit with him, our life is now his life. So even when Paul said, the life that I live, I don't live in the flesh. I now live in the spirit. The only way to live in the spirit is that you be one with Jesus. Amen? Amen. So. <clears throat> in that same verse in Ecclesiastes, it talks about the spirit of animals going into the ground, unlike the spirit of man. Do, do animals have souls or is that a worldly notion? It's not. It, it's twofold. It's not that it's a worldly notion. Animals do, there is a certain dynamic with animals. I don't want to go too far left because then that could, take, that could take us off course. However, I personally don't ascribe to you'll be seeing your dog in the life to come. So you take that and put it where you want it. <clears throat> you take that and put it where you want to put it. My wife is sad now. Because... <laughs> believe it but the reason I don't want to talk about that now is because at another time we're going to talk about spirit animals <clears throat> and I don't want to deal I don't want to go down that route because let's save that for when we do the teaching on spirit animals and then that'll be fun and we can open up that can of worms amen no it was bothering you too I'm sorry, I had it on earlier no, when it was uh, when it was hot inside the studio. Hey, Sean, I love you. Every time I, no, don't be sad, man. Be glad. <laughs> no, so understanding sin, there's a certain dynamic where sin desires to reign with inside of these mortal bodies. And as sin desires to reign inside of these mortal bodies, you have to be the captain of the ship where your spirit now is the one that leads the forefront. So when we talk about mastering the flesh, the first thing we need to understand, what does sin mean? So some people take sin as you did this, you did that, you did this, you did that. That is all sin in a sense. You know, when he says, hey, they did X, Y, and Z and they sinned against the Lord their God, right? He was naming a certain thing that they did and ascribed it as sin. However, I want to reduce that down to its most base level. Sin means to literally miss the mark. Hey Amen, Justin. I've been praying for Justin. Been smoking nonstop since I was 13 and haven't smoked in two weeks and haven't even had dirt. All praise to God. Amen. But then someone will convince you you can't help people over the internet. <laughs> make it make sense. Just, I'm just saying. Make it make sense. No. So sin in its primary in its primary base level that we're going to talk about tonight, sin means to miss the mark. If you were to aim for a certain target and then you do not hit, it is called a sin. The reason that sin is because you miss the point in which you were supposed to. So even in every sin that a man has had, what happened? He missed where he was supposed to be going, right? Sin. So now understanding that sin also is personified. So most people look at sin as what they do. They don't realize that sin is also personified like a person. When I said that the spirit has desires, the only reason the spirit can desire is because it's personified in a way, right? If something has a desire, it has a mind. If something has a desire, it's spiritual. You see that? Yeah. So even like I talked about, hey, the lust of the spirit, the reason the spirit has lust is because the spirit has a mind. Mm -hmm. It's spiritual. Mm -hmm. So on the same token or in the same respect, I should say, don't say token. 
in the same respect, on the other side, sin has desire also. But that's because sin has personification also because sin itself is also personified and it, it, it too is spiritual. Amen? Amen? So I want you to find me, John. Let's start with Cain and Abel. You see that precision word choice, Kevin? And I got your, I got your voice note. I haven't got a chance to listen to it yet, but I'm going to listen to it as soon as this teaching is over. Jay, let's switch that view. When we use the other view, use it if if there were a ratio, use it ninety percent to ten percent. I like I like the main view better. Okay. You good? Yeah. I want you to uh let's start with where God where he brings the they bring their offerings. God rejects <coughs> Cain, he accepts Abel. And then God then God then begins to correct Cain for his offering, okay. or for his position of heart. Let's let's start there. Okay. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and said, "I have acquired a man from the Lord." Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground, and in the process of time. It came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock. Now, let me, stop you, let me start you right there. So when it says in the process of time, Cain then brought an offering of the fruit of the ground. And then Abel then brought an offering of the fat. Right. This was the time for sacrifice. Now, remember, what was that scripture again? What scripture was that? Uh, that was Genesis chapter four. That's Genesis chapter 4, verse um, was it? 3. That's Genesis chapter 4, verse 3, through wherever we stop. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, if, if Sean don't put them scriptures up, at least you don't put them up in there tonight. <laughs> don't hold it to us, because me and John, we'll just keep rolling. I mean, Kevin was on there. Kevin had it up there? Yeah, okay, yeah, amen. Amen, Kevin. Yeah, so that's Genesis 4, 3. We're starting now looking at Cain and Abel. So, she knows Adam. She then receives a child. She then receives and bears. When she bears, she has Cain and she has Abel. And then it says, in the process of time, then they brought their offerings. Cain, being a tender of the field, he brought his fruits. Then Abel brought the offering also. Now, what we have to understand is that these men understood how to interact with God, which is why they were bringing sacrifices. Yes. They were bringing sacrifices to interact with God. They weren't bringing sacrifices just because of happenstance. As a matter of fact, sacrifices weren't even instituted yet. We don't even see sacrifices because the Levitical law, the Deuteronomical law, all that stuff isn't even a part of the equation yet. So remember I said you have the things like the law of the spirit. That which is not written according to the flesh, but it exists truer and higher within the heavens. That's what these men are operating with. They're operating with a principle that exists within the heavens, but others can't see it. So a lot of times what happens is there are things that exist within the heavens, but if man hasn't seen it yet because it's not written, they would then rail against that thing. Mm -hmm. So these men understood in order to interact with God, these are some of the things that we do, mm -hmm. right? So I want you to just understand that the prime minister of Congo is in the building. Amen. Oh, bless you, brother Anthony Kasango. We love you. Leg legit prime minister. <laughs> We something like a big deal around here. <laughs> put the put the put the put the flag in there for him, Kevin. Anthony, we bless you, most esteemed man of God. You know, you don't just get to treat the president like, yeah, what's up, nigga? <laughs> yeah. So, so put uh, it's a, we're grateful to have you. Put put the flag in there for him, Kevin, because clearly none of us would know what it is. <laughs> Amen. We knew it had some of those colors, though. <laughs> I'm making light. Excellent. So let's pick back up now. But for real, we love you and we bless you. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry. And his countenance fell. 
So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Perfect. That's what I want right there. So he tells him that one brother has brought an offering, another brought another brother brought an offering. Then God judges the offering. He despises and rejects Cain's offering, yet he gladly receives Abel's offering. And then Cain is upset. And then he's correcting Cain. Why are you upset? Don't you know if you do good, it will be accepted? So God, even here, is still interacting with him after he's missed the mark. He's missed the mark and God is interacting with him. No, hey, don't you know if you do the right thing, you'll be accepted? Why are you carrying yourself in this way? Then he goes on to help him understand that this is the way it should have been done. Now pick back up. So then he says, if you do good, don't you know, be accepted. Go from right there for me. If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you. So perfect. That's what I was looking for. So if you don't do well, sin then lies at the door. So God is telling him here, this is what I expect of you if you want to interact with me. But if you don't do what I expect of you to interact with me, sin is now present at the door, at the door, excuse me. And its desire is to rule over you. You see that? In order to rule over someone, this is a personification. This, you see that? You see the language here? Its desire, it's knocking or it's lying and it's waiting at your door. Its desire is to rule over you. Do not let it master you. So we talk about mastering the flesh. The reason we have to master the flesh is because if we don't do the right things before God, sin is at the door. And then its desire is to enter in and rule over us. Now, spiritually, what most people, this isn't written so you can't lay it out like that. Like, where does it say that at? But spiritually, remember I taught you when we talked about renewing the mind, how every thought is influenced. Every thought is spiritual, whether of God or whether not of God. Every thought we have is spiritual. That's why he would say things like, bring down every stronghold or, or bring into captivity every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The reason the thought is spiritual is because it exalted itself. Mm -hmm. That showed you that that thought didn't come from you. That thought came from outside of you, but it exalted itself. It impressed itself upon you. Yes. Now, the problem is when spiritually sin has the ability to impress its desire upon us. The moment we give in, it now has a way to not only just cause us to do an action, but to <coughs> enter us. You see that? Not only does it have the not only does it have the capability to impress its thought upon us and cause us to function with it, it then moves a step further where it now enters us in it desire its desire to rule over us. Its desire is to be master over us. You understand? So when he says that sin is knocking at the door, when we talk about the door, the door is, this is all remember this is this book is a I mean obviously I'm reading from the thing, but this, this Bible is a, it's a spiritual book. If you read it from a carnal understanding, you will never grasp the weight of what God is trying to bring you into. So when it says that sin is knocking at your door, the door is spiritual. The door represents the heart of a man. You understand? Yes. The door literally represents the heart of a man. So then what did Jesus say? I and my father stand and we knock at the door. You see, it's the same language. It's spiritual. What did God tell him? Sin is knocking at your door. Its desire is to rule over you. The door represents the heart of a man. That phrase, sin desires for you, is also used in terms of Adam and Eve after the curse from God. You're absolutely correct. You're exactly right. Because it's personified. It's looking for a way to express itself. Sin is very much like cancer. It needs something to thrive on in order for it to live very much like a cancer if it enters inside the body if it doesn't have no, if you starve it then it dies but if it has something to live on it thrives and it lives sin is very much always looking for a host to host it that's why i said it's at the door but if you open the door it no longer is at the door it now enters you 
and now you're in a world of trouble. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's one thing to sin. It's another thing for sin to enter you. Two different things. Am I saying sin is good? No. All sin is bad. <laughs> so, all sin is bad. Everybody put that in the chat. All mm. sin is bad. We have to put that for everyone who's going to want to watch the replay and everyone who's going to want to run and tell that. All sin is bad. I can't stress that enough. But there is a difference where sin can be present outside of you, but if you give way to it, it will enter you and now control you. Mm -hmm. And this is where the problem is. When it says <laughs> sin is knocking at the heart of your door, the heart represents the very core of a man, the very center of a man. From that center is where things are controlled. So when Jesus said that I and my father, we stand and we knock at the door. If any man opens to us, we will come in and we will sup with him and we will make our fellowship with him. We understand that there's fellowship with Jesus, but most people don't understand the life of sin that they've gotten into is because they opened the door. Now they have a life of fellowship with the wicked one. You understand? So then John gave us understanding that he who is of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. Now he who is of God keeps himself. The reason he keeps himself, he guards about his vessel. That way sin can't enter him because he understands if it enters him, it now has the ability to control him. You understand? So even Paul gave us further insight when he talked about those who were given over to a reprobate mind. He was talking about those who were taking the body and you can, you guys can gather together what I'm saying because I have children in the room. He was talking about those who were taking the body and doing things that were inappropriate with it. And he said, because they desire to do these things, I gave them over to a mind that can't be reconciled. I gave them over to this. You understand? Because sin had now entered them. It had fellowship with them. It was controlling them. It was moving them about in every which direction that it desired. You know, sin is a it. It has a desire. You understand? Yeah. So he who is of God keeps himself. I got you. He who is of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. So we have a responsibility to keep ourselves just as much as God is willing to keep us. So even when the word of God helps us understand that he's able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of our exceeding of our father with exceeding great joy, et cetera. Is there a difference between uh, re react that Carl and I'll come back to that. Falling. Is there a difference between falling into sin and wickedness? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to, I'm actually going to come to that in a few. But one falls into sin is totally different from one choosing to sin. Someone who chooses to live a life railing against the Son of God is totally different from a person falling. But even in falling, understand that God is able to keep us. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless. But even in presenting us faultless, we're not truly faultless. He's just taking on it all and presents himself before God for us. Thank you, Lord. You understand? Yes. Remember, when the talk where God says that a righteous man falls seven times, yeah, he gets back up. If he fell, he's not righteous. So him getting up is a one thing, but his righteousness is not based upon his own works. Amen. You understand? So even in that, we have to understand that it's not upon one's own strength. Yeah. Do you have to keep yourself? Yes, but the thing that empowers you to keep yourself is him. Amen? Amen. And if you fall, you have an advocate with the Father. Yeah. If you fall, you have an advocate with the Father. Not when you fall. In the event that you fall. Which means that as we grow from faith to faith and glory to glory, yeah. we move deeper into perfection. That perfection is deeper into light. Yeah. We move deeper into the realms of light, which allows us to be kept in greater ways. Amen. Thank you, God. We literally move deeper into realms of light, which keep us in ways that we cannot even understand. Amen. Amen. Yes. So sin is at the door. The reason it's at the door is because the door is the heart of a man. 
Now, the reason sin is at the door is because sin knows you want to let him in the party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That's the reason it's at the door. If you knew that someone was at the door and they meant you harm, you wouldn't open to let him in. You understand? Yeah. If you knew the end was death, you would never open the door to let them in. Mm -hmm. So sin has to mask itself and parade itself about in such a way that it can now bring about itself to have fellowship with you. Mm -hmm. We get it? Yes. Because in and of itself, it does not have the capability if you could see it for what it is. That's why Paul, was it Paul that told us that all, all sin is pleasurable for a season? Find that for me. That's right, Kevin. You're exactly right. Had the man of the house knew the thief was coming. How many likes we got? Why well, he's finding that? Okay, so we got how many likes? Because we're running out of time, so that's what we'll do. If we can't get enough likes by the time this is over, we'll go ahead and go private. And then those who are in the Telegram group, I'll, I'll cut it on and go live there. Okay, let's get those likes up. So y'all back out and tell your little friends hiding in the shadows, go hit that like button. Or we'll just go, we'll go private.
we good, Jalen. All right, perfect. So we back. We got those likes up. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Now, I didn't want to, but if we have to, we'll just go private in the Telegram group. But as long as we we keep you know we keep it on the same page together, it'd be no problem. Now we were talking about sin, and the reason sin lurks about the door is because it knows that if you open to it, it can then destroy you. But you would never participate in willingly in something that would destroy you if it presented itself in that manner in that way. So sin has pleasures. Pleasures. That's why it's enjoyable. It's enjoyable because how else would it get you to gravitate towards it? How else could it get you to fulfill it? But the end is death. Right? It's kind of like for people who substance abuse. The substance itself brings them a certain feeling, a certain high, a certain intoxication, a certain uplifting, whatever you want to call it. They can get high like the most high. However, at the end, the, what it produces is still death. What it produces still separates you from God. So sin has pleasure for a season. However, the greater pleasures are within his kingdom, within his light, yeah. within his glory, within his presence. So even when we talk about how to break away from sin mastering the flesh, the way you break away from sin mastering the flesh is by entering into the spirit. Because inside of the spirit are the greater pleasures. But that takes you living as spirit, soul, body, not body, soul, spirit. Amen? Amen. Excellent. Yeah, that's right, Justin. Absolutely right. So read, read that for me. By faith, Moses. Tell him, tell him what you're reading though. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24 to 25. Yes. By faith, Moses, when he became of tell him, age. Tell him, read. <laughs> read. And the word of the Lord says. <laughs> he messed up now. He came to 11. <laughs> refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. So he chose to suffer rather to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Sin has pleasure, but it's fleeting. When I say fleeting, meaning it's just like this, <coughs> this time clock. It's quickly waning away. It's quickly waste, wasting away would be a better word. It's literally pleasurable, but it quickly wastes away. But the problem is what it pays you at the end of that isn't worth it. Right? Every man, every man will receive wages for what he has done. Right, what the Word of God talks about the wages of sin, yes. the payment for sin. God is a just boss; He's gonna pay everyone. Nobody has to worry about not getting their paycheck with God. Mm. The problem is He's just, so what you're owed, He gives you. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. Amen. So we can't allow the masters because its payment will not be fun. Amen. Now, understanding that it for real would waste the time. Absolutely. Now, understanding that it has pleasures for a season. The Lord Jesus has the greater pleasure. Yeah. He has the greater light. He has the greater joy. That which surpasses all understanding. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Now, sin is this, this thing is real. It can capture you and grab you in such a way. If you open up to it, that you will look up with a life destroyed, wondering how I got here. <clears throat> Remember he warned Cain. He said, Cain, if you do good, won't it be accepted? Now, sin is knocking at your door. Its desire is to rule over you and to be your master. Don't let it win. Jesus, even in us messing up, still gives us a way out. Yeah. Even in us about to fall, he still gives us a way out. So the word of God says what? To every, there's no temptation unknown that's, that's not common to man. There's no temptation that's not common to man. So no one can say, well, I went through this as if it was exclusive to me or to them. There's no temptation that's not common to man. Yet to every sin, he creates a way of escape. To every sin, he makes a way of escape. Now every, I think we can all agree means what? Every, right? <laughs> You know, and you know, I love like the inside way. Hey, well, let me tell you what that means. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what it means, kind of guy. But every means every. So to every sin, he creates a way of escape, 
a way to circumvent what can destroy you. Every way of sin, he creates a way of escape. Now, understand that he makes a way of escape. We see this now with Cain. Cain is already messed up because he brought the wrong thing. To do good and to know to do right and to do wrong is still what? Sin. sin. That's what the word of God says, right? <laughs> to know to do right and to still do wrong is what? Sin. Cain knew what to do and he still chose to bring the wrong thing. That's what? Sin. sin. But then the greater sin is that sin wants to enter him. Remember I told you, you have sin that you do and then you have sin that enters you. Two different things. But the way you open the door is by practicing sin. Doing the things you know you shouldn't do opens the door for now sin to come in as a person and rule you and master you. So he tells Cain, sin is knocking at your door. It's desire to rule over you. Do not let it rule over you. Now to every temptation is a way of escape. God is providing him the way of escape. Cain, I know what you want to do. Don't do it. That's what he's saying. Cain, I know what you want to do. Don't do it. Then while they're out in the field, what is what's Cain say? It's so real. They really do that split second right before you swim. And if you tapped in, you could absolutely, absolutely, my brother, absolutely. Bless you, Andre Tatum. So. Cain, hold on one second. You guys, hold on one second. Because even though we're in my home, I have children here. I need, I need to fix this. I, mute my microphone. <laughs> all right we back y'all i'm sorry about that we just we live in life helping people find a way of escape to sin Amen. all right Amen. Come on. i'm like yes, i'm like boy. the father in heaven yes. sin is at your door yes. <laughs> let, me, saving the baby. let me give you an opportunity <laughs> Amen. 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 now you choose this day who you're gonna serve mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. what we leave off at sin knocking at your door so sin is knocking at his door and it literally God is giving him a way of escape to give him the insight that I know you can't see what I can see don't let this thing overtake you now God gives him a way of escape and he still doesn't choose it he gives him a way of escape and he still doesn't choose it the anger inside of his heart the wrath inside of his heart the bitterness inside of his heart right now with Cain what a lot of people don't understand about Cain is, now Cain, he should get a bad rap for what he did. But Cain does get a bad rap for what he did. Now, if you understand what happened with Cain, and of course, only spiritual man can teach you this, but what happened in the field when Cain murdered his brother was Cain blacked out. Was that because he literally blacked out? And then he came to himself. When he came to himself, he realized what he had done. But the reason he had the ability to black out like that is because sin now had mastery over him. Mm. When sin has mastery over you, it will control you in ways that you can't even understand. It will control you and move you about in ways you can't understand. Mm. And then the end result, you will look up and say, how did I get here? <laughs> I, I don't even know how this happened. I don't, you hear that from people. I don't even know how I got to this point. You're looking at someone that sin has mastery over. Mm. Mm. Now, Cain was still a dirt bag for what he did, so don't give him too much grace. Right? <laughs> right? But even then, in him, sac and, excuse me, I was about to go jump ahead of myself. Even in them, even in that, in him murdering his brother, remember, Abel was a type of sacrifice. Mm. 
So Abel's blood had to be shed. Abel's blood had to be shed. Abel was the first blood of a prophet that was shed on the earth. So if it had to be shed, you still can't give him back? Mm-mm. See, so you're jumping a couple weeks ahead because now we get into predestination. Okay. <laughs> that leads us into predestination. So that, that one I won't answer okay. because in a couple weeks I'm going to be talking about predestination. Let me answer my other Somebody said Abel was a prophet. Absolutely. Abel, no, Cain was not a prophet. Abel was a prophet. So f somebody help me out and find out that's a... Uh, mm -hmm. Righteous, if you type, if you type righteous Abel yeah. from the blood of righteous Abel, I want you to find that for me. So Andre Tatum, give me a second. They're going to pull the scripture and I'm going to answer your question. He says, so was Abel a prophet? What's PhD? Talk about oh. Yeah, that one is going to piss some people off. <laughs> you looking for, if you type, what what kind of app are you using? I, I want Google this time. Um, what is it? Matthew. Uh, Ty put it in there for you. Yeah, I'll put it on my phone. Thank you, Ty. Bless you. Oh, I'm on the wrong track. That's Therefore, indeed, I send you <laughs> prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city that on you may come all the righteous bloodshed on the earth from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah son of Bercha whom you murdered between the temple and the altar and the altar perfect so he tells us here that <clears throat> now there's another <coughs> translation with Mark that's a Mark actually has a better insight to that scripture but he talked about you guys you don't kill the prophets but your father killed the prophets but you build the tombs of those who killed the prophets mm -hmm. all the way from the bloodshed of righteous Abel until now mm -hmm. so when he went back he said all the way from the blood of righteous Abel until now mm -hmm. he was telling us Abel was a prophet mm -hmm. he was telling us Abel was a prophet. Your fathers killed the prophets. Now you guys, you build the tombs of those who are dead prophets. All the way from the bloodshed of righteous Abel unto now. You understand? Yeah. But that's not what we're talking about tonight. But I wanted you to know so when it says Abel was a prophet, Abel was a prophet. Cain was not a prophet. Thank you. Now, Cain literally blacked out. Literally. But this was based upon sin having mastery over him. Once sin has mastery over you, it's like that puppet string I put on Instagram. It wields you and controls you about in which way it has you to go. This is why man must understand how to crucify the flesh. Man has to understand that he needs to die daily. Right? Man needs to understand that he doesn't live, but Christ lives in him. The context clues be deep in the Bible. Absolutely. But remember, without spiritual eyes, they can't be unveiled. You can read that every day. Every day. Mm -hmm. But it takes spiritual insight to see that from the blood of righteous Abel unto now. That's, that's prophet talk. You understand? Yes. I learned that a certain way. All the way from Abel unto now. 
Amen. Amen. So, I, I mean, I, I don't do it, but like, say when we do the School of Light, I will teach about the prophets from beginning to end. Mm. And I'll share little things about each one of them that aren't written. Because everybody could just read what's written. <laughs> right? So there's, there's, there's context clues in there, but it takes the eyes of the Spirit to see is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now, from the blood of righteous Abel all to now. So Cain literally blacked out because sin had mastery over him. Now, when we understand overcoming or mastering the flesh, the way you master the flesh is that you have to starve it. Sin is literally like a cancer. Justin is actually very good. We talk about why we fast. Why? Because we break the flesh. We break the flesh. Now, Jesus says something very interesting. He says, these ones here, they say, why don't the disciples of John fast, yet your disciples don't fast? Why is that? And he says, what need is there seeing as though they have the bridegroom? Now, most people would tell you to fast because we don't have him. I would tell you to not fast because I do have him. Most people would tell you, you need to fast because you don't have him. Mm. I will tell you, I don't fast because I do have him. Mm. Mm. Period. Amen. Big, difference. Big difference. I don't fast because I have him. Talk heavy. I fast because our souls have to be broken. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and when the soul is broken... I saved that question for me, Felicia, so I don't forget it. When the soul is broken, you now have the ability to master the flesh. Mm -hmm. The reason you have the ability to master the flesh is because the spirit can now steer the ship. Mm -hmm. Amen? So when you black, when people, excuse me, black out drinking, that means it has master over you? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When someone, when people black, like, now I've, I've talked about this. I won't talk about this tonight, but when we start dealing within the substances, mm -hmm. all of the substances are deeply related to sorcery, mm -hmm. deeply related to sorcery. Am I saying drinking alcohol is sorcery? No, but I'm telling you spiritually what I know. They are deeply related. Isn't that why they call them spirits? <laughs> it's deeply related. So now we fast for the breaking of our outer man and the releasing of the spirit. Amen. That's good. What you say? Oh, y'all have y'all. Yes. I mean, it would make sense. Like, oh, the, the witches and stuff make brews and what you, potions and all that stuff. What you think they got in there? Mm -hmm. Trust me when I say these are things that you want to stay away from. Mm -hmm. These are things that you actually want to run away from. I've literally experienced it. I remember when I used to smoke weed, I was listening to the weekend and I felt the demon enter my body straight up. That's because spirits travel upon frequencies. If you play the wrong frequency, it now has access to you. Mm -hmm. One, on my birthday, I'm going to teach you about light frequencies. I will teach you about that. But literally, spirits travel upon frequencies. So that's what happened. And... Smoking marijuana is deeply related to sorcery. Mm -hmm. Now, back to when we talk about the flesh. In order to master the flesh, you have to break it. Mm -hmm. And in order to break it, you have to starve it. Sin is literally like a cancer. And when cancer is inside of someone, it begins to eat on what it has inside of it. Mm -hmm. Right? Or like a, uh, if, a, if a sickness or a virus gets inside of someone... Once it had a host, as they would call it, once it has a host, it now has something to attach itself to. The only way to expel that is to starve it. Sin is very much the same way. The flesh has to be starved. When the flesh is starved, the spirit can now captain the ship. But if the flesh is not starved, that spirit will never have the ability to captain the ship in the way that it needs to. So what about wine? Paul says, save a little wine for the stomach, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not against wine. However, you, you gonna make me, I'm not even, 
I definitely had to stop listening to The Weeknd. He used to love his music. It depressed me, though. Of course. Why do you think it depressed you? It's full of demons. <laughs> demons literally singing to you. Now, when he says about, he has the question, what about wine? I'm not saying you can't drink wine. Paul said you should save, save a little wine for your infirmity. However, wine represented pleasure. Wine represented pleasure. Let me, matter of fact, let me find a scripture for you. Now, he said, just don't get drunk. The dynamics are you don't know the lines between where drunk is and where drunk is not. Mm-hmm. Now, Proverbs tells us here, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty. Now, mind you, he said it is not for kings to drink wines, nor princes. Didn't Felicia just tell y'all that, are ye not gods? Mm. Come on, king. <laughs> Come on, king. He said it's not for kings to drink wine. Mm-hmm. That's lower pleasures. Mm. We come up low, vi- low vibrations. Come on. Low vibrations. <laughs> Low vibrations. So we come higher. When he says that he's the king of kings and the lord of lords, he's not talking about the kings of the world because they're not his God. Mm. Mm. You're the king of kings and the lord of lords. Are you not gods? Mm -hmm. As my wife would say, come up higher, beloved. Come up higher. Yes. I've made you a kingdom of kings and priests. Unto who? God. So, I say that to say, anybody's welcome to do whatever they want to do. But as for me and my house. We gonna serve the Lord. Come on. Yes. Amen. 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 As for me and my house. I am not from here. You understand? I, Justin, I hope that makes sense. And that's not a shot or a jab. It's a call to come higher. Amen. Amen. It's not a shot or a jab. Because I too have tasted of the greater pleasures of the world. And if you taste, excuse me, I too have tasted of the greater, greater pleasures of his light. If you taste it, you'll never want anything the world has to offer. Amen. If you taste it, you won't want anything the world has to offer. Be not drunk with wine where as in excess, but be drunk with the Holy Ghost. Mm. I have a drink that they do not know of. Why are these men drunk seeing as though it's this time of day? These men are not drunk as you suppose. I have a greater wine. I have a greater drink. Yes. And it comes from his spirit. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. I have a drink from the homeland. Yes. Amen. So, I'm going to need some help from the Lord with that. Amen. Amen. We'll help you. Ask God, Father, may I experience your light and your pleasures. If you taste of his goodness, you will understand that the world is fleeting and the world is fading Mm -hmm. and its pleasures are temporal. Mm -hmm. If you taste of his goodness, you will understand that the world is fleeting, that the world is temporal and its pleasures are small, small. Mm -hmm. Amen. So understanding that, who took us there, Justin? Thank you, Justin. (laughs) But understanding that sin has to be starved because when it enters a man, it then has to be starved out. That way, the spirit can be the captain of the ship. 
the spirit can be the captain of the ship. So when you talk about breaking the flesh or breaking the soul so the spirit can lead it, these are dynamics that help you master the flesh. Now, someone just said, how long should you fast to break the soul? Wrong question. It's never how long you should fast. Mm -hmm. Wrong question. Because if you fast 40 days on day 45, I guarantee you, you will be right back to allowing the flesh to be the dominant captain of the ship. Yes. The approach needs to be that I will present myself with a lifestyle of fasting. Mm -hmm. When it says that the sacrifices are of a broken and a contrite spirit. He says sacrifices, plural, yes. meaning continually. These continual sacrifices mm -hmm. are a broken and contrite spirit, which means that continually we break and we present ourselves before God. And in doing so, we live a lifestyle of brokenness where at no point in time is our flesh ever raging as the captain of this ship. Mm -hmm. I hope that makes sense. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. That's a continual process. You know? Carl really wants you to answer his question. What's this at? He said it three was, times. Was it on the, okay, on the topic of fasting? Why does one teach? On the topic of fasting, why do some teach that certain demons can only be cast out by fasting? I thought fasting was towards the flesh. That's a two that's a twofold question, but even in that, when the disciples went out and they came back and they rejoiced and master, we rejoiced because the demons were subject to us in your name. And then they came back a second time and said, How come this we, we were trying and we couldn't we couldn't get it to, we couldn't get it? And he says, This kind here only comes out by fasting and prayer. They were prideful thinking that, oh, because we possess this, we can do this. Mm -hmm. That's what that was about. So sometimes people teach that like, oh, that right there, you can only cast those devils out by fasting and prayer. No, nowhere, no, nobody gets an extra shot of power because they're fasting. <laughs> just, in case you, just in case you didn't know. At no point in time do you fast and then you get an extra jolt of power. Power is power. However, fasting allows the free course of what God has placed in you to come out. You understand? Yeah. So if this is the capacity that you have within you, but you don't fast, this might be what you can function with. Mm -hmm. But as you live a life of sacrifices, brokenness, this is what can now free course through you. Mm -hmm. Come off a two-day fast, go into a one-day, come off a one-day, go into a three-day. Hey, that, you say, I'll be like, hey, we fast five days. I right, we fast in two. I right, we fast in one. Hey, we fast for seven days. Hey, we finish fast 15. It's just, it's a lifestyle of sacrifice. An extra espresso shot of power. Amen. Yes. So the flesh has to be starved. And as the flesh is starved, we put ourselves into crucifixion with Jesus. And as we put ourselves, as we die with him, we're resurrected with him. Now we're beginning to move into the spirit. So when the word of God tells us that, hey, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The only way not to fulfill the lust of the flesh is to be on the other side. But you can never be on the other side if you think you're from here. Mm. So when I say, I am not from here, you think I'm just, I'm, I'm picking what you're making light of it, but I'm trying to bring you into something. Mm. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm. If you're walking on this side, you can't walk on this side. Mm. You understand? So when I walk in the spirit, this side is irrelevant to me. Why? Because I'm dead. Mm. Amen? Amen? Excellent. Now, Kenneth Hagin, Prophet Kenneth Hagin, he says something really wonderful. He says, if a man has two dogs and one, he says, I'm going to feed him milk, lamb, rice, chicken, steak. And then he has another dog and he just feeds him cold snacks. And then he has the two fight. Which one you think is going to win? What you feed always wins. Mm. What you feed will always win. Mm. What you feed will always win. Kenneth Fagan said it best. If a man has two dogs and he feeds one milk, rice, lamb, steak, chicken, and then he feeds the other one cold snacks, and he put the two to fight against each other, the one who's been fed greater wins. 
what are you feeding yourself? Are you sowing to the spirit or are you sowing to the flesh? Amen. Because the word of God tells us that he who sows to the spirit, find that for me so we can put it in the chat. He that sows to the spirit reaps life, but he that sows to the flesh. So you have to ask yourself in everything you're doing, am I sowing to the flesh or am I sowing to the spirit? Mm. Literally, am I sowing to the flesh in this moment with this activity or am I sowing into the spirit? Absolutely, Ty. Absolutely, Tyree. A hundred percent. You find it, John? Yes. Read that for them and put it in there for me. Galatians chapter six, mm -hmm. verse seven through nine. <coughs> Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to so his whatever, flesh. So whatever a man sows, that he shall also reap. Mm -hmm. He didn't say what types he sows. He says, whatsoever he sows, that he shall also reap. So remember, I said that if you sow to the spirit, you will reap to the spirit. Mm -hmm. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap to the flesh. But remember, the flesh represents nothing more than corruption. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now go ahead and pick back up. For he who sows to his flesh will, so he, for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And so he who yeah. sows to the spirit shall reap one way, he who sows to the flesh shall reap another way. You see that? Now someone asks, how do we sow to the spirit? Y'all, hold on, I got to send a text message, then I answer that. Now, he who sows to the spirit reaps one way. He who sows to the flesh reaps another way. Now, Quentin asks, how do we sow to the spirit? Sitting right here listening to this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I say things like, hey, we're going to do the free retreat at 5 a.m. You're sowing to the spirit. When I say, hey, we're going to do the trap of sexual sin, and it's five hours long. Yeah. You are literally sowing into the spirit. Mm -hmm. Literally. I mean, you said it like three times. Like, yeah. what we feed is and what we sow is when you move towards the spirit you're sowing in the spirit when you move towards the flesh you're sowing towards the flesh Amen. now obviously there's plenty of dynamics that go with that when you're giving to the poor I mean we can just when you're fasting when you're praying when you're meditating like all the things but the fact is we know spiritual activity and we know carnal activity <laughs> if it's spiritual uh, it you're, matter, what like, you mean who, when you say give to the poor does it matter in what way like, can I give to my friends? That are poor? No, like that's, they're not poor. I'm just saying, like, does it matter? Like, does it matter who we give to? No, not necessarily. I think it's, I think it's the fact of understanding that we should do this because it's important to do that. Okay. But don't think you're going to store up deep spiritual points for sowing to the person that's a hellion <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm either right because he said when you do these things to the least of these my brethren yeah. so he's more concerned with us doing those things unto those who are of the household of faith mm -hmm. right he says hey man when you when you fed me when you clothed me when you did this when you did that so forth and so on right unto the least of these my brethren jesus has always cared about the inside house first mm -hmm. the dogs can get some of the crumbs also but we're gonna take care of the table first mm -hmm. well that's what i meant by poor yeah because i don't know like, yeah, you know, I'm with you. Yeah, okay. yeah, you good. Yeah, you know if you, if it was it was out of pocket, I tell you, you good. I really felt like a soldier in the army of the Lord for real. Hey, don't worry. And speaking of that, we're gonna, we're gonna I'm gonna take a bathroom break here because we out of time, and I'll come back. But what we'll do is for all of those who are in the fruit tree, we're not gonna do it tomorrow. 
because I just don't, I simply don't have enough time to do it and present it in a way to give you everything. I mean, that's going to take, it's going to take about three, four hours to do it. And I just don't have that time available tomorrow. So I'll work through rescheduling that and then it'll be good, but we'll still to the spirit some way, man. <laughs> Excellent. So just put, put the stuff up for us for a second so I can use the restroom and then we'll be right back with God's grace. Safer. All the money you making them stack. But you, you ain't getting that bad. So you sit like the demons. 
the tag. While I sit on my piece, let them fight on my behalf. If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one. If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one. If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one. If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one. I don't care what they say. Yeah, yeah. They can talk all they want, go get mad when I'm living out what I believe. Yeah. Now I'm walking with God, I'm living my life, I'm a whole different being. Still insane, yeah. When I step on the scene, it's about him. No, it's not about me. Got diamonds on my body, but it don't make me. I was stopping at the bands, but I ain't have peace. Moving out of time, and I didn't know me. I was in a place. I'm not. I'm not sure who that is. Wait. Y'all know who that is? Dang, bro, what you do to get blocked? I only block people that say something stupid, so. I'm not certain. If I blocked you and you didn't say something stupid, I'm sorry. But uh, send me an inbox and we can reconcile. Send me a DM. <laughs> God has given me the ministry of reconciliation. <laughs> but obviously he not blocked because he commented. So I'm not, maybe that's on a different platform. Maybe I block, maybe it was by accident. I, I, I apologize. Forgive me, man of God, if I blocked you unjustly. Now, sin is knocking at your door. Don't let it overtake you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I'm blocked. <laughs> I'm going to come find you now. Put your, put your Instagram handle on there. I'm going to come find you. Put, put your Instagram handle in the chat. I'm going to unblock you right now while I got a chance. Because if not, it won't happen. Because them DMs be full. Thank you, Lord. No, you have to figure. I just pull it closer to my mouth. Uh, All right, so we back, we back, we back. Andre, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come find you after this, and we'll figure out what happened. We'll, we'll sort it out and figure out what happened. But if you can hear me well, put a thumbs up in the chat. If the volume's good for you, put a thumbs up, and then we'll, we'll pick back up. Y'all cut it up. Yeah, let's see them thumbs up and then we'll we'll pick back up. Hey man, excellent. Well, I love you guys. Let's rock. So we left off talking about what? Sow into the spirit? Yes. So we have sow into the spirit and sow into the flesh. God bless you, Olu. Veronica, I love you. Alex, man of God, love you. Carl, let's rock. All right, so we left off talking about sowing to the spirit, sowing to the flesh, both of which you reap. Now, understanding that you can sow to the spirit and sow to the flesh. Hey, Nathaniel, I love you, woman of God. Understanding that you can sow to the spirit and you can sow to the flesh, you have to live conscious of the spirit. Because remember, I taught you that the spirit has desires. Remember, I taught you that the spirit has lust. Those lusts are desires. And even if the spirit has desires that it desires to bring forth, those things are things that aid you in sowing to the spirit. But the self-serving things lead us into the deeper, shallow realms of sowing to the flesh. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, if we want to deal with sowing to the flesh and sowing to the spirit, we also have to deal with being crucified with Christ. Because... Remember, this entire thing, you always hear me say, man, the, the, that book that we read is spiritual. Well, not only is that book we read spiritual, but every practice and everything 
Now, the problem is I say practice, but everything, every practice, every ritual, everything that he has us do inside of there is spiritual also. You understand? Even down to us being baptized. Spiritual. You do know being baptized is a ritual. Literally. What'd you say? That's exactly what it is. You're being baptized into something. Yes. Say ritual. It is. Into his death, burial, and burial and resurrection. Mm-hmm. That's not just a oh, let's go get baptized. It's a spiritual thing. Amen. Mm-hmm. So let's go to Galatians and because Paul had the best insight about being crucified with Christ. Communion as well. Communion is a ritual. A hundred percent. Now I probably stepped out there a little too far saying that word. You know, stepped in it now. (laughs) (laughs) Let's go to Galatians 2 and uh, 20. Amen. I'm here for the smoke and what come behind my God. We need some more soldiers like that. Yeah. Justin, my no limit soldier. Said two twenty. Mm-hmm. Galatians two twenty. Let me uh let me switch my version that I'm reading. Galatians two twenty. I'm just kind of scrolling back a few verses to see. Okay, yeah, let's do 20, but let's do 20 through 21. Okay. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. But Christ so lives in me. He's been crucified with who? Christ. Christ. And who? He said, I no longer what? Live. live. I have been crucified with Christ. Mm-hmm. I am no longer living. That's what he said. It is not I who lives, but who? Christ. Christ. Who lives where? In me. In me. Remember I said, hey man, you fast because you don't have a bridegroom. I have him. Why? Because he's in me. Yes. You're just not crucified. Mm. So he's not inside of you. Gotcha. Amen? Amen? Now I understand Christ amongst us is a hope of glory, but crucifixion, that's not a group act, that's a personal act. He's in me. Amen? Amen. All right. So we're going to start back from 20 and then roll through that. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, in the life which I now live in the flesh. So he lives his life where? Now in the flesh. So if you're going to master the flesh, Christ has to be the one living. Yes. Understand what I'm saying? He said, the life that I live, I now live in the flesh. But that life in the flesh is because Christ is alive in me. We talk about mastering the flesh. The reason you can't master the flesh is because Christ has to be alive in you. As long as you try to do it, it's not going to work. As long as it's I, 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 and not him in me, it never works. You will find yourself in a a cycle of patterns. I did well for a week. Fall. Or I I did well for three weeks. Fall. I did well for six months. Fall. I did well for two years. Relapse. I made it for five. Relapse. Christ has to be in you, and now he is walking through you. Absolutely. A man can live to a point where Christ begins to walk through him. Mm-hmm. Literally. A man can live in light and in such a way where God now begins to walk through him. Now, people don't like that kind of stuff. That's mystic talk. Mm-hmm. But remember, the mystics portion, like Madame Guyon, was that they would seek to be one with their God. Paul had captured that.
Mute my mic real quick. I didn't say anything. I was just asking him a question, okay? So it wasn't no kind of, no, none of that. I was just asking, I was asking him a question. <laughs> so he's like, well, no. No, it, it wasn't like that. I just, I was asking him a quick question real quick. So pick back up, go start with 20, and then let's keep reading. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ dies in vain. So if righteousness what? Comes through the law. So you telling me righteousness doesn't come by what you do? Just read read. Take take me out of it. Just read it. Just take me out of it and just read it. I did not set aside the grace of God. For, I did not take the grace of God and set it aside. For what purpose? For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. So you're telling me that if I do all these things, I'm still not righteous? You know, it's possible to, it's possible to do everything right and still not be righteous. That's called morality. Righteousness is only found in a man called Christ Jesus. I'm not even, I was going to, I was getting ready to break that down and open up some stuff. I'm not even going to do that. Just read it one more time. Just read it. No, just read it. Just read it the way it says it. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Amen. That's Galatians 2, 20 through 21. Let's go to Galatians 5 and 24. Oh, there go Diamond. That's right, Ashley. Let's cook. I'm finna show y'all something in a second. Where God, if God gives me the grace. Let's do Galatians five. Let me uh, let me let's see where we want to start. Uh, boy, oh boy. <laughs> five twenty-four. But let's do. Let's start at 22, actually. Um, let's do 20 through, John. And let's go through 22 through 25. Okay. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. So the what of the Spirit? The fruit. The what? Fruit. I thought it was fruits. No, nope. fruit. How many of y'all been saying fruits of the Spirit? Whoa. The fruits of the Spirit. <laughs> The fruits of the spirit. No, it's the fruit of the spirit. Now I'm going. I won't teach this today, but one day, one day I will teach you what the fruitful tree means. When we for my birthday, when we do the school of light, I will teach you what the fruitful tree truly means. I will teach you about the trees in heaven. Give us a taste. I will teach. No, we won't do it now. But I just I want you to I, just just consider one fruit. Different manifestations. Mm. So when he says that, never mind. We whatever. No, 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 we're not doing. It. We're not doing. It. <laughs> but I, I will. I, I will. Riddle me this, Batman. Okay. Here we go. When God told Adam, "The day you eat of this tree, surely you will die." He didn't tell him what type of fruits were on the tree. The day you eat of this tree, you will die. Mm. Now, I'll teach you about it another time. Oh, come on now. Don't just drop us off the cliff. No, because I don't want to go. 
but you gotta you have to take that and put it together on your own. The fruit of the spirit. But yet the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, long suffering, kindness, temperance. All right, go ahead and read, go ahead and read. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So remember I told you earlier, the flesh has passions and desires. Mm -hmm. The Spirit also has passions and and desires but the person who walks in the spirit and has the fruit of the spirit which is love joy patience long suffering all of those different things that person is crucified with christ now go ahead and those who are christ started 22 or 24 and those who are christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires if we live in the spirit. So if we live where? In the spirit. If we live where? In the spirit. The only way you can live somewhere is because it's a residence. Mm -hmm. It's a place. If we live in the spirit. I live in D.C. You live where you live. You where you live. All y'all live where y'all live. That's in a place. If I live in the spirit, let us also walk in. In the spirit, walking in the spirit is a place. People have reduced it to, I just walk in the spirit. Yes. And you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh thereof. You got to have the fruits of the spirit. People take spiritual things and they dumb them down into this carnal Christianity. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, this is the height of spirituality in serving Christ. Mm -hmm. He told you right here, if you live in the spirit... Paul told you earlier, the life that I live, I don't live it in the flesh. Paul was giving you hints all along. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Now, brethren, if any man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. So now understanding that we have the fruit of the spirit, we are crucified with Christ, we walk in the spirit, we don't provoke one another, and in the event that one of our brothers get overtaken, only those who are spiritual can restore him. He didn't say, brethren, restore your brethren. He said, no, brethren, you who are spiritual. He's putting the classification in who qualifies to restore somebody. He didn't say elders restore them. Jesus. He said, you who are spiritual. This same man gave us insight that, hey, if anybody's sick, let them call upon the elders of the church. They'll pray the prayer. So we understand that there's a certain place for certain things. He said it right here. Brethren, you who are spiritual, restore such a one. So when I say things like, when the Lord came to commission me was to raise prophets, apostles, and spiritual men. Understand where it's coming from. Ye who are spiritual. He put an emphasis on the ability to restore someone needs to be that they have spiritual nature through them. Even when we go to the prophetic understanding. When he gave the prophetic outline. Now understand when we talk about the prophetic Prophets, the prophetic, all that stuff, right? We have no documentation. Now, mind you, I said documentation. Mm -hmm. Not that we don't know. We have no documentation about the prophetic since Elisha. None. We don't have any documentation about the prophetic since Elisha. Mm -hmm. Then John the Baptist pops up on the scene. But what we act like there were no other prophets except for John. When Peter, excuse me, when Paul then is blinded, Jesus had to tell the prophet Ananias, hey, go see him. He didn't call for an apostle. He called the prophet. Hey, go see him. I got something I want to do with him. We misunderstand it because it wasn't written in big red letters. Now, they were still there, still present, 
still profiting. Yes. You understand? Yes. So if one is not an apostle prophet, but dealing in the realm of one who's spiritual, is that getting into the realm of seer streaming, etc.? Yes and no. Because even seers are in the prophetic realm also. Dreamers are also in the prophetic realm also. Mm -hmm. But they're all spiritual. All of them. The prophets, the seers, and the dreamers. All of them. Now, Paul, what I was saying was that we have no documentation about spiritual men. We have no documentation about the prophetic after Elisha. We don't even have any documentation about the apostles and their prophetic graces. Like John, the beloved. No documentation whatsoever. Yet, we still see that Paul comes and he says what? If any man prophesies, let him prophesy, let the next one judge. If more than one have a word, let the first one speak. And if no one gets heard, let him speak. Let no one speak out of turn. Let all things be done and decently in order. So forth and so on. If anyone has a tongue, let him do this. Let him do that. He sets the guidelines in order for a church that's in disarray. And then he says, these things that I received, I received from the Lord. And if any man considers himself to be a prophet or a spiritual man, let him consider this the commandments of God. He didn't say if anyone just any one of you brother. He said, no, if anyone considers himself to be a prophet or a spiritual man, he will know that what I'm saying is from God is what he was saying. Oh, yes. If anyone is a prophet or apostle, he will know what I'm saying came from Jesus. Why? We had the same boss. Mm. We may say things differently, but we got the, we had the same training manual. Yes. Are apostles not considered spiritual in that way? What is that that gives them their empowerment? The ability to multiply, not necessarily their ability to move in a spiritual manner like the prophet. Apostles are spiritual. However, they're not spiritual in the same way that a prophet is. Absolutely not. Because the prophet has a different spirit. Totally different spirit. So what happens is a lot of the apostolic emphasis that came to that was based upon us seeing the work that they did. But even in that, we don't truly understand apostles because he says that, what do we, what do we say? Oh, apostles plant churches mm -hmm. or oh, apostles did. We don't even know because he called 12 men to 12 men to himself and he named them apostles. They hadn't planted one church. Mm -hmm. He called 12. So there's that for calling people too early. Mm -hmm. He called 12 men to himself and he named them apostles. Not you're called to be apostles. You're an apostle. You're an apostle. Peter, matter of fact, you're going to deny me. You're an apostle. You have to have the ability to see for what God is doing in someone, regardless of where they are. Peter, I pray that your faith doesn't fail you. Peter, I'm praying for you because the enemy's desire is to sift you like we got. I pray that your faith doesn't fail you. It means he had the ability for his faith to fail. Jesus knew it was in the realm of possibility that Peter could not make it. Yet he still named him an apostle. Definitely called them apostles while they were still out here racist and tripping. Absolutely. But notice when he needed Paul's eyes open, he called a prophet. You, I need you to go do this. Why? He endowed him with certain things and abilities that were in the prophetic lineage. I need you to go make this happen. Now, that's another time I'll teach you about apostles and prophets. But... I have to ask my question. What are besetting sins? Do we overcome them the same way we all all sins? Or is that an issue? Which sin, when you say besetting sins, uh, give me the like the scripture reference you're speaking about. Or what sins you're speaking about exactly? And I'll, I'll I may circle back around to that since we got on this prophet and apostle talk. <laughs> Literally, he called twelve to them and he named them apostles. Them, I was about to say them ninjas. I was about to say with a G too. <laughs> ain't planted one church. Ain't established one doctrine. Because mm -hmm. apostles establish doctrine also. They help root and ground the church. They ain't rooted and grounded a lick of nothing. They stuck up in an upper room waiting for the Holy Spirit and, and they 12 apostles. So God can see beyond you being ragtag and he can see what Jesus truly has for you in the earth. 
So then I see someone asking, I say, hey, man, that's my apostle. Yes. Why? I got different eyes, baby. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yes. As my wife would say, come up high, beloved. All right, let's pick back up with the fruit of the spirit. Brethren, if any man is overtaken in any trespass, ye who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. So when we talk about mastering the flesh, we have to also help others master the flesh because the fact is we're going to have brothers who get overtaken. But when we help them, we help them how? In a spirit of gentleness meekness why because we're not not subject to the same thing coming upon us Amen. we're not subject to the same thing we we don't have the ability to sidestep the same thing coming over us mm-hmm. so when i was in the cab with one of my daughters and we were talking and she was having a rough patch with some things this past weekend right and she was like this and she was going through it and she was apologizing and i stopped her from apologizing and I said, listen, I'm going to teach you something right now. Don't apologize. What you do is remember the same gentleness and meekness that I have for you. Because one day I'm going to need the same thing. Mm-hmm. And you make a promise that you'll deal with me in the same way and we'll both be fine. Mm-hmm. Wow. Ye hear spiritual restore such a one and a spirit of gentleness. Lest the same thing come and tempt you. And I taught her that right there. Listen. I don't need your apology. And I don't need you to fix this. What I need you to do is remember this. And deal with me with the same gentleness and the same meekness. Because the guarantee is one day I'm going to blow it so bad. And I'm going to need the same mercy. And I'm going to need the same kindness. And I'm going to need the same gentleness. And I'm going to need the same fruit of the spirit. Which is love, joy, patience, peace, loss of temper. I'm going to need all of that also. So you remember that. Amen. So even when we talk about, excuse me, I, I missed it. it. It went away. It went away too quick. But even in that, understand when we talk about mastering the flesh, we have to help one another. Admonish one another while it's yet still called today, while it's yet still called day. But then back into what we were talking about with Galatians, being crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. The life that gets crucified with Christ gets exalted with Christ also. Mm -hmm. But the life that gets exalted with Christ is in the spirit, not in the flesh. Mm -hmm. The flesh just happens to manifest that life. Mm -hmm. So that's why you can minister to someone. And when you have the Christ like that, I just I just feel God radiating throughout you or you. I just feel or as those who don't know. Right, those who aren't, I just there's just this vibe, there's this light. You, and you, you have this aura. Yes. I was like, really? Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what they can see. Tell me more. Yeah, like there's just light and it's warm. And I thought, does it feel good here? And they're like, yeah. Why? Wow, they can perceive also. But why? That life that I live is Christ in me. Mm-hmm. Nothing in me radiates light. Nothing in me radiates warmth. Nothing in me gives out any of those things that they were feeling. Mm -hmm. Why? But I'm crucified with Christ. So the life that I live, I don't live in the flesh. I live in the spirit. Amen? Amen. Excellent. Hebrews 12 and 1. Find Hebrews 12 and 1 for me. Don't read it. Don't read it yet, though. But just find it for me. I guess y'all found some grace tonight because we didn't flip this a couple times. Thank you. Y'all thank Janika. Y'all say thank you, Janika. <laughs> Matter of fact, let's do Hebrews 12. Let's do 1 through 4. Let me get the, uh, let me get the right version with you, though. Perfect. Go ahead. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight 
and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Now, I'm going to teach y'all something real quick. When he says, therefore, let us lay aside, or so we're encompassed by the great cloud of witnesses, therefore lay aside the sin and weight, that's so let us lay aside the sin and the weight that can easily ensnare us, right? We need to understand that when Paul wrote these letters, he didn't write them with chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 12. He wrote a letter. So when he said, therefore, this is tied to everything that he just said prior to that. So although I'm having him read 12, verse 1 through 4, the context is about him in 11, everything that he's speaking about before then. Okay? So when you get a chance, you need to go read Hebrews 11 so that you can understand why we have a therefore. All right? Amen. Go ahead, you can pick back up. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. Looking unto who? Jesus. So when we say things like just look to the Lord, we, these aren't things we just make up. Mm. Okay, because you get the haters, right? No, but go ahead. I'm not even going to give him no time tonight. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet was this it to bloodshed, striving against sin? Perfect. So when we talk about breaking the flesh, Paul told us here that there's a certain level of resisting sin. Remember, sin is knocking at your door. It desires to overtake you. Let us lay aside the sin that so easily beset us, right? Yes. The function or the nature of sin has to be resisted. Mm -hmm. Cain, sin is knocking at your door. Do not let it enter in. Resist it. Fight it. Then Paul gives us greater insight. He says that you have not resisted sin unto what point? Bloodshed. Bloodshed. So when a man says, I've done everything I can do, you probably haven't. Mm. Are we saying cut yourself? No. But what he is saying is that you have not resisted to the point that you would even bring self-infliction of harm. Mm. Jesus said that if your eye offends you, pluck it out if your hand offends you cut it off it'd be better for you to enter into the kingdom maimed than to go into hell whole right yes. i'd rather be a toilet cleaner on mount zion <laughs> with no eyes than enter a hell hole Amen. literally literally no exaggerations why you have not resisted sin to the point of shedding blood. Yes. One of the reasons people can't get, they can't trap me to talk on the phone a lot. Why? Because too much talking leads to sin. Yes. Too much talking leads to sin. And this is coming from somebody who prior to certain encounters with Jesus used to talk a lot. Mm -hmm. Now nobody can get me on the phone. And if you get me on the phone, it's with intention and purpose. It's very intentional, very purposeful. Like, hey, bop, 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 bop. All right, let's, all right, man, God bless you. Let's talk soon. Why? Every encounter that I've had with the Lord Jesus and every encounter that I've had by virtue of an angel has changed me. Every time I have an encounter, it changes me. Literally, my wife get a new husband every six to nine months. She can't even get me like that. And then she have to step into that wife mode and pull me back down. Hey, 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 big boy. <laughs> have I convinced you that I love you? All right, give me a little love. <laughs> she had to go past the gym style on me. <laughs> I know how you do, but I'm, I'm somebody. <laughs> that's right. So even in that, that's that's, you know. You have to resist sin. And Paul gave us the insight. So even in people and their struggles, I understand the struggles, but he said that you have not resisted it to this point, which means that you haven't done all. Paul said, having done all to stand. 
Most people say, man, I'm just trying to stand. No, you haven't done all. Having done all to stand. You understand? Mm -hmm. Having done all to stand. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have to consider Jesus and what he endured or you become weary in your souls. And when you become weary in your souls, you give to sin. You literally give to sin. The weakness is because you have not looked to God. So when I say, man, look to Jesus and he reveals the Father. You have to look to the author and finisher of your faith, considering all the things that he endured, considering that he was despised and shamed, all of these things. Look to him. Look to him. Amen, you too? Let us look to him. Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Let us look to Jesus because he reveals the Father to us. So understanding that we have to be crucified with Christ, we have to, what did Paul say? I die daily. Every day. So guess what? You're going to go to bed tomorrow. You got to die again. The problem is you die today and you think that carries you over to tomorrow. <laughs> so you kill it today. You kill the spiritual walk. You're like, I killed them, Holy Ghost. You go to pray. You're like, I killed it today. I didn't sin. I didn't fall. I didn't stumble. I didn't bumble. Nothing. But the problem is you got to do that again tomorrow. Paul understood that. I die daily. I am crucified with Christ daily if you don't die daily the flesh will arise again and then it will, won't be before long that is leading you and is guiding you but you have to crucify it daily you understand when you die daily this gives you the ability to walk in the spirit now even in dying daily no days off our approach of him and our pursuit of him brings us into his light when he brings us into his light we are changed and as we're changed the desires of the flesh get stripped away from us and our desires become the things of the spirit. Literally, the desires of the flesh get stripped away from us in our pursuit of him and the desires of the spirit become ours. Literally. But you have to pursue God. If you don't pursue God, you don't receive desires of the spirit because you're not aware because remember I said that you have the flesh and you have the spirit. You two tapped in on this side, you need to come on this side. You understand? You got to come back on this side so that you can receive. But you tapped in on this side trying to figure out why you don't understand the desires of the spirit. Why? You walk in according to the lust of the flesh. But if you walk according to the lust of the spirit and you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen? Amen. Excellent. So let's go to Colossians 3. Being that we live in a fallen world, are we able to walk like Adam originally did prior to the fall? You don't have to walk like Adam. You have a greater Adam, Jesus. Amen. Restoring unto us our rightful standing before the Father. Let's do uh, Colossians. I think it's three. Let me find it. Colossians three. Let's do one through... 10. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, 
the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedient, in which yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourself are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him where there is neither Greek nor Jews, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythians, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Okay, perfect. Hey, Michael Ogden, send me a DM on Instagram, or if you if you email me, we, we could talk offline about it. I wanted to ask him. Yeah, if you would please send me a DM on Instagram, and just because that's gonna take us out of out of the path where we're going, send me a DM, and I promise you, I'm gonna message you tonight, and we can we can begin that conversation, and see what God has for you. Okay, Michael, if you if you if you got that, give me a thumbs up. That way, I know you got it. Now let's pick back up where we're at. So let's go let's go to verse one. And let's do one through three. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. So now if you are raised with Christ, you're going to look for the things which are above, not things that are here. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of the father or sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. So if you want to master the flesh, you have to set your heart and your mind to where he is, which is above. Set your mind to things which are not on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Now, he just told you, you were raised with Christ. Seek those things which are above where Christ is. Where's Christ? Above. So let's read it. Verse one. If then you will raise with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is. So let's gather that together. We're seeking those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Yes. Now, then we would go down to three for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Where is that? Above. So when I say I'm not from here, my life is above. You see what I'm saying? My life is hidden in Christ with God, far above all of these other earthly things. So these are even then these aren't. It's fun to say I'm not from here, right? But these aren't catchphrases. I'm trying you. I'm trying to get you to understand spiritually that man exists in different realms. You understand? Yes. But if you don't understand that your life is hidden with Christ and God, you just read it. My life is hidden with Christ and God. No, my life is in him because in him I live, move, and have my being. Yes. Amen? Amen. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So he says that our life is with him in God. But even when he appears, we will appear with him in glory. We're not from here. You understand? So even when we talk about mastering the flesh, we have to set our heart on the things which are above. Set our mind on the things which are above. Let us look to him in his light. And in, that's Colossians 3, 1 through 10. That's Colossians 3, 1 through 10. But we're specifically dealing with verses 1 through 4. We have to look far above where he is seated at the right hand of God. Let our mind be on those things because we are seated or we are in Christ. And when he appears, we shall appear in him in glory. Yes. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. Now, understanding mastering the flesh, we have to be before him because as we exist within the spirit, we get changed to being deeper in the spirit. All the prophets understood that they would encounter God and then they would change. So I said, like, hey, every time I have an encounter, it changes me mm-hmm. every time. 
I personally know I'm not the same person. I'm like, man, some of my friends got to re got to, I got to reintroduce myself. How you doing? My name is so and so. Because the person you know doesn't he he is clearly dead. It's, it's not even fair to you. I feel bad for some of my friends. Like man, you don't need the guy you know don't even exist no more. I I do sometimes I feel bad for some of my friends. I'm like man, <laughs> the guy you knew to love you still love him, but he doesn't exist no more. His personality that thing is gone. It's a whole different person. Kind of like on those when they say, "Hey man, remember Jamie Fox was not well for a period," and then they try to say, "That's not the real Jamie Fox when he came back out," mm-hmm. or like Kanye, like that's not really him. It's not really me. <laughs> Julie, what'd she say? What'd she say? Oh, hey man, my wife, my wife says that. Listen, you want to know how somebody feel, listen to their spouse. You want to know how somebody feel, listen to their spouse when they preach. When they pray and when they prophesy, that'll tell you everything you need to know about somebody. <laughs> Legit, that'll tell you everything you need to know about somebody. But existing in the light of God, existing within the spirit, it changes us. Isaiah understood that. Isaiah said, in the day that King Uzziah died, I, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. I saw the train and his robe and all this stuff. And then he touched me. And then I was purged and I was changed. But he was already a prophet. So there goes that for all your stuff about, oh, you, God can't use you if you ain't this. Mm. This brother got purged of iniquity, but he had already been prophesying. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. <laughs> Am I saying prophets should be unclean? No. Yeah. Prophets should be clean. But all I'm saying is God knows what he's doing. Yeah. Matter of fact, find it for me. I think that's like Isaiah 6. 16 or 66 or it's something with a six <laughs> Isaiah 6 Isaiah 6 that's like one you start first one Re- read that for me I want you to go read it to all the way when the seraphim touches him with the coal and then he goes on and begins to prophesy after that he's cleansed so forth so read that read that for me in the year that the king Uzziah, what's his name? Uzziah, you said it right. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole, whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door was shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. Now, and- this is the prophet saying he got lips that's not clean. And this ain't Isaiah 1. <laughs> Isaiah had been profiting by the time Uzziah died. Okay? And he says, in light of God, in light of being in the spirit, in light of encountering the throne of heaven, he says, I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. Every encounter with Jesus, we understand our depravity. Every encounter. If you have an encounter with God and you don't understand your depravity, you probably didn't encounter him. You probably didn't because everyone you realize how undone we are in all of his beauty and all of his light and all of his radiance and all of his fire and all of his smoke and all of his glory. All of it helps us realize how undone we are. He says, I, me, the prophet, the prophet to the name, I am a man of unclean lips. Go ahead. Pick back up. Because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts now when he says for my eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts moses had the best understanding of this he says no man can see me Mary says i want to see you and he says 
where no man can see me and live, right? That wasn't that no man could see me and he would literally live. It means that no man could see me and remain as he is because as he sees me, he gets changed into my image. He gets changed into my likeness or the better way to see it as he sees me in my light, he gets buried and res and he gets buried and gets resurrected. That's the better way to put it. No man can see me and live. Why? Because if he sees me in my light, he will die to himself and rise up in my likeness. No man can see me and live. Why? Because when he sees me, he becomes like me. The moment Isaiah gets caught up into the spirit, he realizes I am undone and I'm undone because I'm with a group of people who are undone. No man can see me and live. Moses didn't die when God passed by him. So people say, no, you know, no one can see God. Moses thought he could. Because then he went on to say, why would you talk about this man Moses seeing as though he, you know, when, when the Aaron and Miriam, I was about to say Sarah, when Aaron, Aaron and Miriam are speaking about him and then God has to come down and call him out in front of the temple and say, hey, y'all come to the front. Why would you speak about Moses seeing as though he's my friend who's talked to me face to face like a man speaks to a friend? Moses was encountering God face to face. Mm -hmm. Moses had grew beyond where he once was at one point where he didn't get to know God like that. Mm -hmm. Where now he sees God and interacts with God. You understand? Yes. The light of interacting with him causes us to die to our old ways, causes that old man to be buried and causes that new man to arise. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about mastering the flesh, you have to have a revelation of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You have to have a revelation of God because in his light, as you behold him, you become like him. And all of that old nature begins to be shed away. And you arise in the likeness and the newness of Christ. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now let's pick back up. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away. Your sin purged. So Isaiah is a prophet who has sin. Yes. The prophet has sin. Yes. The prophet who can prophesy has sin. And when he gets caught up into the spirit, he gets purged. Why? Because every man who encounters the things of the spirit gets changed into his image and his likeness every time. Every time. Every time. He gets caught up to the likeness. The angel has to take tongs to take coals from the fire. And then he puts it on his lip. Well, well, golly, the angel needed tongs and he's going to put it on his bare lips. Why? Because he's a man of fire now. Literally. The angel can't touch it, but Isaiah can. The angelic being can't touch the coal that's from the throne, from the fire. He has to get tongs, yet Isaiah puts it right on his lips. And he touched my mouth with it. Not he touched the tongs and then gave me tongs. No, he put it on my lips. Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, who shall I send and who will go with us? Then I said, here I am, send me. And he said, go and tell this people. This prepares him for his next mission with God. Every encounter sets us up for the next thing. Amen. Every encounter sets us up for the next thing. Even what I'm doing now was set up by another encounter. Even what I have to do for my birthday is set up by something else God's going to bring me. Amen. Every encounter sets us up for the next thing God has for us to do. God encounters Moses in the bush through the angel of the Lord. Bam, Moses gets set on course. You see what I'm saying? Yes. He passes before him, gives him the next thing. Just like that. Brings him up, says, hey, don't worry about it. I'll go with you. Just like that. Every encounter brings us to the next thing God has for us. And when we see him in his light, the flesh dies and this life in Christ now arises. Then we can understand truly what it means to walk in the spirit because we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh thereof. This is a prophet. And this man encounters the seraphim. The seraphim, first of all, if you know seraphim, seraphims are angelic beings. Who, what do you know about seraphims? Most people don't, but I'll tell you about seraphim. Seraphims are beings of fire. Fire consumes their entire being. 
Fire consumes the seraphim's entire being, yet they had to take tongs from heaven to grab the coals. Then he touches the prophet's lips. Prophets bring fire. Purging him. Then he says, your sin has been removed. I thought he was a prophet. What's, what sin should he have? You understand? Yeah. Jacob too. That's right. Jacob has an encounter and then he is changed. It's just, I mean, you look at all the, I give you like the framework of it, but you look at it, you'll see it in every time. Mm-hmm. You'll see it every time. Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. In light of God, when we experience him, we become like him. When we see his light, we become light like he is. When we see his fire, we become like he is. Mm-hmm. That's why I tell people, if you try to escape hell for fire, you're going to miss it. Mm-hmm. Because heaven is full of fire. Mm-hmm. If you try to escape heaven for fire, what are you going to do when the seraphims come around? Mm-hmm. What are you going to do when the seraphims come around? And every, I won't, I won't say that, however, even in light of heaven, the way we cross over is all through angelic delegations. Mm-hmm. The way we are brought in is all through angelic delegations. If you are scared of fire now, you, you, don't, you don't stand a chance for what's to come. You don't stand a chance for what's to come. There's fire all throughout heaven, buddy. I can tell you that. You understand? Mm-hmm. The thing is that in his fire, we're not consumed. Although he is the all-consuming fire, we're caught into him. Oneness into him. Likeness in him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But even in mastering the flesh, you have to encounter him. You have to seek him. In seeking him, you will see him. When you see him, you become like him. When you become, when you become like him, now... You can master the flesh because it doesn't have reign over you. It doesn't have rule over you. It doesn't have control over you. But then, even in that, we have the grace of God that can keep us in our moments of weakness. You understand? Yeah. So even when people talk about the gospel, they don't, really, they don't know what the gospel truly is. <laughs> they don't know what the gospel truly is. The gospel is grace. Yes. There is no, there is no, there, there, there is no hyper grace. Grace is hyper by nature. Grace is hyper by default. Paul talked about it. He says, what, who, who, who has bewitched you? Who has tricked you into believing another gospel? Mm-hmm. And then went on to talk about, let me find that so that way they don't think I'm making up stuff. Because mm-hmm. y- y'all know. Help, can you help us? <laughs> Jeez, give us the foundation of our faith. Mm-hmm. Help us to understand what we're John, get that for me. Galatians 1 and 6. You read it so that way they know I'm not making it up. Mm-hmm. This is Galatians 1 and 6. So we'll wrap up here. Just for time's sake. Right. We'll do a part two with this too. Because we'll, 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 there's so much more to this. You said Galatians 1 and what? Galatians 1 and 6. And take your time when you read it. Okay. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you Get the given right in the grace of Christ. To a different gospel. Say that again. Read that again. I marvel that you are turning away so soon. I marvel that you're turning away so soon to what? From him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different grace. I mean, to a different gospel, my bad. To a, you know, you good. To a different gospel. So what is the original gospel? The grace of Christ. He says, I marvel that you, you are being turned away so soon unto a different gospel. A different gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the grace of Christ. That is the gospel. Thank you, Amen. What you say, beautiful? The grace of our wonderful Lord Jesus. I marvel that you have turned away to another gospel from the grace of Christ. The grace of Christ is the gospel. That he devises a way in the mean for a man to be drawn unto himself. 
that he brings his light, that a man can die to himself and arise in his likeness, that we can look above and our life is no longer in ourselves, but it's hidden with Christ in God. And he's at the right hand of the father. So if you understand that your life isn't here, your life is in him above, far above, far above, far above what this earth can bring. Yes. Embrace that, that you're not from here. When you embrace that, you begin to walk in the spirit. Oh, that's the thing that they do. I don't do that. I walk in the spirit. That's mere man. That's mere man stuff. I don't do that. Paul said that. He said, man, I want to talk to you guys about certain things, but you guys are behaving like mere men. You guys are behaving like mere men. Why would he say that you're behaving like mere men? You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, sorry about that, guys. But listen, I love you guys. I bless you guys. I look forward to seeing you. Listen, for those of who are with us in the Fruitful Tree, we won't be meeting tomorrow because I have some travels and things coming up, but I'm going to get that worked out through this weekend so we can do that next week, and it's going to be good with God's grace. We'll pick up talking about dreams, and then keep an eye out on your emails or Instagram because with God's grace, Felicia's probably going to teach on Monday. Just a little pop-up teaching. That'll be fun. And then Wednesday, we'll be right back to continue with what God has for us. So I love you. I bless you. May God keep you in his ways. Talk to you soon.
it right of your head. Most of them don't even hear what he said. I'ma slow it, I'ma say it again. This time, please read it, don't leave it on red. The kingdom of God is at hand. He's repent of your sins. The man with a pen, yeah. Talking to God while he's writing it down. It was worse because they wanted him dead, yeah. What pushes a man who go talk about a life that he's never seen and never led, yeah. What pushes a man who go speak with his chest, no one ups in the crowd while him dead, yeah. Just please pick up that book, yeah. It's never regular, I'm on a schedule, yeah I know that it is a level up I'm always messing up, so are the people in it I got no time for no games, yeah All they be selling is pain, yeah The hand that you give, watch them take it You made it, you thought you were safer All the money you making them stack But you, you ain't getting that back So you sit like the demons attack While I sit on my peace, let them fight on my behalf If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one If it's for me, then who be against me? Time and I didn't know me. I was in a place I was fighting demons. Yeah. Got me right, told me leave them. Yeah. Can't go back to that season. Yeah. Can't go back to that season. Yeah.